certain disciples. Do you see this verse 14? This is now the third time that Jesus showed himself to his disciples. Why was he doing that? He wanted to strengthen their faith. Their faith in him as their Lord, as their Messiah, as the Christ, as the Savior, and as the Master that has commanded them, go and tell all the people to Third time, third time that he showed himself unto his disciples. Have you visited any of those converts three times? Look at Jesus. He rose from the dead and to strengthen them and to make them stand unshakable and to make them face the persecution waiting for them in the acts of the apostles. He appeared to them, he appeared to them, he appeared to them again. In John 20 verse 19, then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and says unto them, Peace be unto you. Why did he come to them at this time? Because they were fearful. The new Christ rose from the dead, but they were locked behind the doors. Don't you know those new converts, babes in Christ, can be very, very fearful. What will my friends say? What will my parents say? What will my schoolmates say? What will my community say? And the people I've been running out together with, playing pranks and doing evil, I'm not doing that again. What are they going to say? And then they become fearful. They might lock themselves up. What a wonderful thing it will be for you and those converts when they are fearful. At just at the right moment, you are there to strengthen them, to say, peace be unto you. That was the first time. Let's look at verse 24. But Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. And the other disciples therefore said unto him, we have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, Except I see in his hands the print of the nails and put my finger in the print of the nails and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. What if you go to those uh, newcomers and you don't meet them at home and they just happen not to be there like Thomas? What do you do? You go back there again. That's why now we're reading verse 26. And after eight days again, his disciples were within, and Thomas was them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst, and said, Peace be unto you. Then said he to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, behold my hands, and reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side, and be not faithless, but believing. And Thomas answered, and said unto him, My Lord and my God. Do you see how direct the Lord Jesus Christ was in the follow-up, in the visitation? He went to visit them, and he made sure now Thomas was there. If you don't meet Thomas at home the first time in your follow-up uh, program or system, go back there again. And then do you see how Jesus Christ answered his question? And really went to the point, because Thomas had said, except I see the hand, except I see that side, and thrust my hand in there, I will not believe. And Jesus said, Thomas, here is my hand. Put your finger here. And here is my side. Thrust your hand there. And then Thomas said, my Lord and my God. That was the second time. Chapter 21, verse 1. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. And on this wise should he himself. This is the third time now. Why did he go to them at this particular time? Look at verse 3. Simon Peter says unto them, I go a fishing. They say unto him, We also go with thee. They went forth and entered into a ship immediately. And that night they caught nothing. That's why when I come back to verse 14, this now is the third time that Jesus showed himself to his disciples after he had risen from the dead in verse 15. So when they had done, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? Well, but other people followed after Peter. 
Why is it that Jesus concentrated on Simon Peter? In our follow-up, we need to be very wise. You see, in follow-up, you see the people that are leaders over the people. What I mean is, this fellow is converted, this fellow is converted, and this other one is converted. But this one is like the mouthpiece of the rest of them. And whatever he says he wants to do, if he says, I don't think I want to follow Christ again, the other people will say, you strong fellow, if you are strong as this and you say you are not following, who am I? I am weak. I'm not as strong as you. If you are not following, I'm not following. Another person said, well, the persecution is so much. Naturally, you are bold. Naturally, you are very, very strong. And you are telling us that the persecution is too much. You are not going to follow. If you cannot stand, where will I stand? I too will not follow again. You see, Peter was an influencer. He influenced all the other people. I go out fishing, and then they went with him. And Jesus now went to visit them. He wanted to follow them up. They saw time. And then he centered his follow up uh, instruction on Peter because he knew if I get Peter, he will influence the rest of them. And so here we are in verse 15 Simon Peter, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? He says unto him, Yes, Lord, that knowest that I love thee. He says unto him, Feed my land. You see, all these words that have influenced. I'm now commanding you, commissioning you, feed them, instruct them, help them. The Lord is telling us that we actually need to do this follow-up, and we need to do it intelligently. Let's rise up and talk to the Lord in prayer. Why don't you talk to the Lord and say, Lord, I will do it. I've heard your word. I commit myself to you, and it will be done. Brethren,